ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقل قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله واحسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله كل ضلاله في النار as we continue in the chapter of Alhamdulillah. As we continue and finish the last part of the chapter, due to the fact we don't have a lot of time, I think Aisha, what time does it come in now, everyone? Nine or two. Okay, we were trying to finish the chapter, inshallah. And we'll discuss whether or not that we'll start to maybe change the classes temporarily into classes that are connected with Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, we'll discuss and let the people know that very soon, inshallah. We'll discuss that and let everyone know as soon as possible. <clears throat> but before we actually focus on that, we want to close out the chapter where we discussed and I think it was approximately we stopped at the, the Mas'ala Al-Hadi Ashra which is the 11th matter where we discussed Bismillah. Am I not mistaken everyone? We stopped at 17 طيب. We'll stop at 17. We we'll always start at 17. And inshallah, we will end the chapter from there. <coughs> as you'll find that it says, as we stopped there, where it says, the 17 masala, al qaidatul al kulliya li qawlihi inna has sunan. Where it says, al qaid al kulliya, the principle which is which is general, that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, that he mentioned said, Inna has sunan. That he said, Verily, it is the ways. It is the ways. <clears throat> that is based upon extracted from the narration in Abu Waqid al Laythi. Right, everyone? When the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, if you look in the hadith, what does it say? If you go back in the page and look in the hadith, what does it say? Hmm? He says, La tattabi'una, la tattabi'u sunana man kana qablakum. The first part of the hadith is said, what everyone? He says, La Allahu Akbar, inna his sunan. He says, Allahu Akbar, he said, verily it is the ways. He said, Walladhi nafsi bi yadeh, kama qad banu Israel ni Musa, ija alana ilaha kama lahum aliha qala inna kum qawmu tajalun. Right, everyone? طيب. The ayah where it says, He said, Allahu Akbar, inna has sunan. Verily, it is the ways. Verily, it is the ways. Based upon this, the word as sunan or sanan, as it comes in both, both ways or both dhabt, 
of the shakl, as they call it, dhabt bil shakl, as far as the actual, the harakat that's put on it, which is the actual what? The ways to word it is either sunan or senan. What is the meaning of sunan here? It means turuq. Turuq. Meaning a methodology or the ways. The Prophet ﷺ, of course, said that this nation will follow the ways of those who came before them, out of warning them. Does this now necessitate that this will be what? Lawful? Due to the fact that the message of Allah ﷺ had what? That he gave something of, of, the, of the unseen of what will happen to this nation. And we said that Ahl Ilm say that the, when the message of Allah ﷺ said this, this is not in order to legalize or allow one to do it. Rather, it is a way of what? Rather, it is in a manner what they call Ala Sabil al Tahdir. It is done in a manner of what? Of warning. So, when the Message of Allah said in this hadith, you will most definitely follow the ways of those before you. It is not in order to encourage them to do it, rather, it's warning them to stay away from it. Because if you follow the ways of those before you, you will be destroyed. And you will fall into. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us in Surah Al-Fatiha, غَيْلِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ That none of those, as Allah ta'ala talked about the Jews and the Christians in, in the first, in Surah Al-Fatiha, and what we recite in every, in every prayer. He says, not of those who what? Who has earned his wrath. Who were the Jews and those who went astray, who were the Christians. So if you follow the ways of those who came before you, then you will also fall into what? You will fall into destruction, into turmoil, such as those who preceded you from the past. So when the message of Allah, as Shaykh Uthaymi even mentioned, it said that this was man, mentioned in a manner of a tahdir, in a manner to warn you. Just like, for example, similar to that, the narration of the Prophet, where he mentioned it said, سَتَفْتَرِقُ هَذِي الْأُمَّةِ إِلَى ثَلَاثِ وَالسَّبْعِينَ فِرْقَةِ كُلُّهَا فِي إِلَى وَاحِدًا so for example, there's another narration as we know. That the Message of Allah Sallallahu said that my Ummah, that we were what? That they would divide into 73 sects. All of them are in hell except what? Except one. Type. A person might ask this narration, he said his Ummah was separated into 73 sects. What is that what caused division amongst the Ummah? Why? Do you, I want everyone to be, or pay close attention to this narration. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that the Ummah is going to separate into 73 sects. Five. When he said this, he said this in the manner firstly, number one is to what? To warn, not to fall into it. But what would be the reason why they deviated? What is the thing that makes a, a, the Muslims from a deviant sect? What is it? What is it? Mm. That, that could be, that's, part, that's a partial reason, lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. What is Musa? Give me a little bit more detail. Details. You said in the belief system, meaning for like a for, for, just give me a, le- a better word for that to make it clear. In the aqidah, that the Muslims will start to deviate in the foundations of the religion. They'll start to differ in the matters of what, which necessitates from this narration that the, that the foundations of the religion are all what intact. There is no di- there is no difference. In those matters. So the, the ummah is unified based upon the usul, because that's what unifies us. Where the deviation occurs and the discrepancy occurs is where everyone? In the aspect of aqidah, in the aspect of the foundation and the fundamentals. The foundation and the fundamentals, once one has a discrepancy, discrepancy in that matter, or in that matter, what will come as a result of it, he will what? Make himself from the deviant sex. That's the reason why, inshallah, if we have more time, where I get myself a little bit more settled, we'll go through the books of what are those usul. That if one differed in it or deviated in it, he will make himself from one of those schisms or parties that the Message of Allah said that they will what? Enter the hellfire. Excuse me for one second.
Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? <clears throat> so that's the reason why we say, in regards to these matters that we're teaching now, when the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi that he mentioned these narrations, when he said, you will most definitely follow the ways of those who what, preceded you. Or, for example, that my ummah will separate into what? 73 sects. Is he saying it in order to encourage the ummah to do it? No. He's doing it in order to what? To warn, not to do it. Not to follow the ways. Because if you do it, you'll be amongst those who will receive turmoil and humiliation and destruction. Just like those who preceded you. Is it clear, everyone? Also, likewise, for example, another example of that, the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, which is Al Bukhari, the Prophet said, He said, That will most definitely be, be for my nation who will make lawful fornication and illicit relationships out of marriage, meaning illicit, illicit sexual behavior or relationships, whether it be adultery or fornication or homosexuality or what have you. There will be people from my ummah that يستحلون الحر. Well, hir here means what? It means zina. It means fornication. He says also, they will also make lawful or they will legalize the wearing of silk and also likewise intoxicants and ma'azif and also music. So the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here said what everyone? Said this in a manner which is to give another clear example of what? That these things are illegal. Because we have other texts saying that it is what? That it's unlawful to indulge in these manners. So this narration said there's going to be from my ummah that will do it to let one know that what? This is another example that he's given to show not to do it. Not to indulge in these matters. And not to be amongst those who what? Legalize illicit relationships. Relationships which are done out of marriage. Whether it be for fornication. Or whether it be from adultery. Or whether it be from homosexuality. Or what have you. As we know the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What? Highly prohibited these matters. But he said there were going to be people from his ummah that were what? Indulge in it. And not only indulge in it. But people who will legalize it, make it halal, say it will be lawful, which is something of what? It's on a higher level. A higher level than just mere indulging in it and committing the act. When you legalize it, make something halal, then it's something tremendous. And we know those type of affairs necessitates what? It could take one out the fold of Islam. Due to the fact that Allah and His Messenger have made these matters what? Lawful. And to one come behind and to change it, it would change that what? That sharia or that which is in the shara, which has been legislated. We know it can necessitate nullifying one's Islam because one is not careful. But at any rate, these are examples to show that the message of Allah said in certain matters that what? They were going to happen to the ummah. But however, what everyone? This is just to show that he's done it in a matter. I'm asking questions so people can answer. That the Prophet ﷺ is saying this in order to what? To warn, Right? Not to what? Not to fall into it and not to indulge in it. Is it clear, everyone? Excuse me. طيب. If you notice, as all these matters, if you notice, as it says in the next point, in the next matter in your book, if you look in your books, it says, الثامنة, the 18th matter. It says, أن هذا علم من أعلام النبوة. لكونه وقع كما أخبر عليه الصلاة والسلام. He said the 18th matter, which is what everyone. He said this is a sign from the sign of prophethood. It's a sign from the sign of prophethood, due to the fact that the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, when He informed it, it took place exactly how He informed. Everything that the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم informed has taken place to show the veracity of His prophethood that it was true. So many narrations that we see that the message of Allah has said, we see it coming true right in front of our eyes. For example, the ummah separating in the 73 sects. Also likewise, the Muslims found the ways of the, of, of the non-Muslims. Also likewise, women being clothed but, but still being naked. Also likewise, the Prophet ﷺ, even there's a narration that Imam al-Abani authenticate, authenticated, talking about the car. Now, there's a narration, which is also collecting Imam Ahmed as Musnad, where the Prophet ﷺ had predicted about there will be the car. Now, there is. Alhamdulillah, as I have the book, bringing the fawaid in it, the Imam al-Abani authenticated. 
And alhamdulillah, our brother, Akhun al-Fadil, Hassan Somali, also said it one time in a lesson, and I wasn't expecting him to say it. It was one of my, I think I was just listening to what was going on in the class one day, and he said it in the class likewise. So all this agrees to show that what will be informed is authentic information. So the message of Allah, he sent him informed about all these matters, which is to show, as they say, sidqu nubuwata. It's to show the veracity and the truthfulness of his prophethood, alayhi salatu wasalam. But however, ya ma'ish al-ikhwa, like we talked about, you'll find that the great imam in his book, if you notice that he's striking all these points from these narrations, to show that these are narrations that you can use as evidence and proof. When you want to either spread the call to Salafiya correctly, or if you need to have a delil or evidence and a proof in order to what? Establish your point based upon knowledge. You understand everyone? So that's the reason why he's picking out all these points from these narrations. So what? So you can see how to use them as an evidence. So don't just think that these matters are just what mentioned just, as they say, without any benefit. It's extracting, he's just showing you how the ulama extracted, extract benefits from these narrations. So they could be used or utilized for certain matters. Whether it be, like we said, to enlighten someone who needs to be educated or needs to be what? Guided properly. Or you want to indulge in a matter and you want to use certain authentic points and information as it being knowledge-based instead of just being your own speech. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? So next, the, the ninth, is it says, التاسعه عشرة. It says, أَنَّ كُلَّ مَا ذَمَّ اللَّهُ بِهِ الْيَهُودِ وَالنَّصَارَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ أَنَّهُ لَنَا Alhamdulillah extracted the 19th, the 19th point, which is what everyone Now, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned, he condemned and he, he, and he also likewise dispraised the Yahud and the Nasara and the Quran, he says that it is also likewise a warning for what? For us also. So not just the Qasas or the, the different types of stories or narrations that have been mentioned in the book of Allah to bring with the Allah. It's not only just for stories. There's a lot of people think that you will find in, when they read these stories of what happened to the nations of the past, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned them in order to warn us not to go down the same path or traverse the same path. The story is a warning, an exhortation, to take from it a lesson that this is what destroyed those of the past. Meaning, if you do the same thing, this will be your what? The reason for your demise. And the reason for what? Your destruction likewise. So it's not just merely just stories that we read. There's a lot of people and a lot of Muslims these days when they let, when they let we regretfully say, you'll find that they just read the stories as they're just bedtime fairy tales. Not thinking that these are supposed to be actually actualized and practiced in our daily lives. They just say, oh yeah, these are the stories of the prophets or these are the stories of the, the Sahaba that, you know, this happened here. You know, good night, son. You know, that's not really what we do today. Good night. Good night. Then I'll go back to voting tomorrow and go back to having a girlfriend and going back to being in the street and not praying and doing what we normally used to do prior before Islam or us being in Islam but still being in the street or what have you. So they just read the story, close it out. Oh, son, go to sleep, wake up, go about your normal affairs or so your daily affairs tomorrow. This is not what is what? This is not what is requested from us. We're requested to live this likewise to the best of our ability. So you'll find that everything that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had informed, and likewise what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala condemned and dispraised of the Jews and the Christians in the Quran, there's also what? For us. Not, traver- not to traverse the same method or the same methodology. As you'll find there's an ayah where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in his book, there's an ayah where it says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ He said, verily we have made our signs in detail in order to make clear the road of those who went to destruction. In order to make clear that those who what? Went down the road of destruction. So everything that Allah Ta'ala mentioned as, as a dispraise for them, then likewise is what? It's a warning for us. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Also, the great imam that he mentions, it says in this regard, Sheikh Muhammad Basalih al-Uthaymin, he says, 
أن كل من ذم الله به اليهو ونصر في القرآن أنه لنا هذا ليس على إطلاقه وظاهره وظاهره بل يحمل قوله لنا أي لبعضنا ويكون المراد به المجموع للجميع كما قال العلماء في قوله تعالى تنا عند دي آي وسوت الأنعام Don't worry everyone I'm explain it والرسل كان من الإنس فقط فإذا وقع تشبه باليهود والنصارى فإن الذم الذي يكون لهم يكون لنا وما من أحد من الناس غالبا إلا وفيه شبه باليهود أو النصارى فالذي يعصي الله على بصيرة فيه شبه من اليهود والذي يعبد الله على ضلالة فيه شبه من النصارى والذي يحسد الناس على ما أتاهم الله من فضله فيه شبه من اليهود وهذا مجرة Listen to this فائدة that he mentions رحم الله in this 19th point He says that everything that Allah condemned and dispraise the Jews and the Christians in the Quran that is for what? It is for us. This is what Shaykh Uthami says. He says, this statement that the great, that the great Imam that he mentioned here, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah, he said, this is not, laysa ala talaqihi. This is not general for all cases. You understand everyone so far? Just listen. He says, rather what is applied when he said the statement that is for us, he said, rather that means for some of us. For some of us. He said, what is intended here is a group of people, not everyone. As Ahl Im that they mention, as, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in his book, as the ulama that they mention, Sultan An'am, ayah number 130, just listen, everyone. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, Ya ma'ashar al jinni wal ins, alam yatikum rusulu minkum. He says, for example, the ayah where Allah Tabarik Ta'ala says in his book, he says, oh, group of the jinn and the ins. He says that the messengers, when they come, from amongst you. So this ayah is saying that was addressing some of the people, meaning the people that have went astray and have rejected the guidance. In regards to those who are what? That are upon the right guidance, then that's something different. Listen to what he goes on to say. He said, well, rusulu kana min ins faqad. That the messengers they was only for mankind only. He says, is some type of resemblance that it occurs, meaning resembling the Jews and the Christians, or in some type of way. For verily the dispraise will be for what? There will be for them, not for all of us. He said, there's not any of us except, he says, you'll find in a lot of cases, he said, there's some type of way there's a resemblance with the Jews and the Christians. For example, he said, for the one who disobeys Allah upon insight, meaning upon knowledge, he said, in that is a resemblance with the Jews. For the one who disobeys Allah upon insight, meaning upon knowledge, that in it is a resemblance with the Jews or the Christians, but here he's saying the Jews. I'm sorry, everyone. If in it is a base of disobeying Allah upon knowledge is a resemblance with the Jews. I'm sorry. And the one who worships Allah upon Ignorance and misguidance in it is what? Resemblance with the Christians. Also, likewise, a person that has envy and he's jealous of people and envious of people in which Allah has given of his bounties, verily in that is a resemblance with likewise the, the who? The Yahud, the Jews. And also, as they say, and so on and so forth. Is it clear what he's saying, everyone? So all of this, like we said, is a warning. It's a warning in which we mention, excuse me, it's a warning in which what? In which the Prophet ﷺ is what? Giving to the ummah not to fall into these matters because like we said, it is something that is dangerous. So that's the, you have to excuse me, I'm trying to finish the class, just excuse me for a second. I don't need your, I don't need your input, Sheikh. We're trying to finish the class. Just excuse me. Just excuse me. I mean, what are you My smoke? Hassan. Hassan, where are you? I'm from Arabic. Where are you? Where are you from Arabic? How did you do here? I did here in Yemen. How did you do here in Yemen? How did you do here in Yemen? I did here in Yemen. I didn't understand anything. He didn't understand what I'm saying. Okay. Let's, 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 أنت ما فهمتني أنت ما فهمت كلامي 
<laughs> but you didn't understand what I'm asking you. I said, how many years have you spent in Yemen? I said, I studied in Yemen two years. Okay. Did you study? Did Sheikh Mahatma teach you these manners that you're doing now? These type of manners? Yeah, but I'm in the middle of teaching a class and, and Isha is about to come in in about 15 minutes. So we're trying to finish class here. And, and I'm sure Sheikh Mahatma didn't tell you to come with those type of manners because it's unacceptable, Sheikh. I, I doubt that. It's, it's terrible manners, Sheikh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you to learn manners. <laughs> Some people just come and they just want to disturb you, throw you off. Let's focus, you mashaykh. Any rate, you guys ready? Don't, don't worry about any distractions that come from shaitan. Just focus on the durus. I said from shaitan, not you. I said distractions are from. Oh, shaykh, shaykh. Have a good day, Sheikh. Salaamu Alaikum. 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 You guys are right. What's the next one? Tafadal. Al-Ishroon. Anahum mutakarrulun idahum an al-ibadat mabnaha ala al-amr. He says that also what has been what? That also has been discussed within was that worship that is what? That is settled upon whatever you want. That worship is what? That is built upon? What is it built upon everyone? What's it say? I want everyone to focus. Do not f- turn to the left or right. Focus. Don't let any of these people sidetrack you. Focus. Do you hear me? Focus. You understand? Focus. Any of these sidetracks and these shayateen that try to come to try to disturb our class, focus. Shaytan does not want you people to learn tawheed and sunnah. And tawheed, focus. People don't worry about now. You understand what I'm saying, everyone? Fadda. What's the next one? That's the 20th? 20th. طيب. It says, أنه متقررنا عنده أن العبادات مبناها على الأمر. هذا واضح. فالعبادات مبناها على الأمر فلم يثبت فيه أمر. For the worship that is built upon what? Is built upon a command. There is nothing that has been established in the shari'ah. That if it's not been affirmed, then it's considered what? Innovation. Is it clear, everyone? طيب. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had mentioned in the narration we said that whoever does an action that it's not upon our fair, he will have it what? He will have it rejected. Just to let everyone know that the ibadat that is all built upon what? Some type of delil from the Kitab al-Sunnah. That the origin of the ibadat, everything is haram. Until there's a delil that comes with what? To show and prove that one can what? Can do it. Everything is haram. So you find that Ahl Ilm, that they're very strict in the affair of what? As the affair of Aqeedah and Ibadat. That everything is haram. Until what? Until there's a delil, a text saying that one can what? To do it. As we discussed this last class, right everyone? Do we say that the asl fil ibadat al manah That the origin as far as in worship, all of it is what? Everything's prohibited. Until there comes a delil or a text to show that one can what? Can do it. So that's the reason why we said in this regard that what? As far as the opposite, what they call al mu'amalat, as far as in regards to the general dealings with the people, it's the opposite. Which is what everyone? That everything is upon hill. Everything is upon what is halal until there's another text to show, or there's a text that says you cannot do it. In regards to ibadat, that everything is what? What do we say, everyone? Abdullah. What do we say? Everything is what? Everything is what? Everything is ahsent. Everything is prohibited. Until there's a text that what? 
The one, because he, well, that one can do it. Is it clear what I'm saying? Gee, let me touch. Play. Gee. As far as in this regard, your ma'ash al ikhwah, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No, I don't. I'm just worried about doing my tea, that's all. طيب من عمل عمل ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد طيب. So the message of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had mentioned this in this regard. Said what everyone? What did he say? He said, as far as oh, excuse me, whoever does an action that's not upon our affairs of ours, then he will have it rejected. Which is to show show clearly what everyone? What does it show? That if the affair is what is not in accordance to what has been legislated, Abdullah, focus. Focus. If the affair is not in accordance to what is revelation, if it's not in accordance to what the Prophet ﷺ legislated, or Allah to be with the Allah legislated, then it's what? It's rejected. Fine. That if it's not an evidence or proof established or showing that we can do it, meaning something of an affair of worship that Allah has mentioned that we can do, or the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that we can do, if one wants to draw close to Allah, it's not something that is legislated with no evidence or proof, and one does it, then it would not be acceptable with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jayid, is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? طيب, <clears throat> the next, next masala, because we want to end it. The next masala. Hmm. طيب next مسألة twenty one جيد no 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 what was the last part where it said uh, that in it is who's your Lord who's your prophet this is your religion this is why everyone to be foc- to focus right here. How is this extracted from this narration? Who's your Lord? Who's your prophet? Who's your religion? Or what's your religion? They said it's extracted from the hadith. This is to show the great fiqh of Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab right here. His very insight of extracting a narration from the hadith. Notice it says in the rest of the, of the matter, what does it say? From it is extracted, who's your Lord? Who's your prophet? What is your religion? Where is that extracted from the hadith? Uh-huh, I'm sorry. Ahsant. <laughs> Jay. That's one. No, no, for it says here, Marra book. We could take it from a lot of aspects of the hadith, but where would you find the meaning of who's your Lord? Hmm? No, 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 no. From the hadith. Look in the hadith. That's in your book. Hadith Abu Luqid al Laythi. Just focus on the hadith. Where would we pick out who's your Lord, who's your prophet, and what is your what? And what is your religion? <laughs> Gee, that's one part. Marra book. Who's your Lord? Tell you, what about who's your prophet? Let me try to do this because we can finish this. Listen to how the deep fiqh of Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab is. The deep fiqh of it. Listen. He says, as far as him, who's your prophet? Listen. He says, as far as who's your Lord, that's clear. Alhamdulillah, you, everyone understands that part. So how is in the hadith, who's the prophet? He says, because, now listen to this. 
The Messenger of Allah وسلم, informs something of the unseen, which is you will most follow the ways of those who what came before you. He, then he informs something of the unseen, and we believe it. <laughs> is it clear? Musa, what I'm saying? Ibrahim, you understand? So the Prophet informs something of the unseen, then is what is from? Prophethood. Ahsent. So that coincides with what? Who is your prophet? <laughs> is it clear? Dawood? Jeeb. Now this is the hard part. This is the hard part. What's your religion? What is your religion? Oh, well, as we know, these are the questions of the grave. What's your religion? This one is a little bit more difficult. Oh, whoa, that's scary. He was right. Ibrahim's right. That's scary. Ibrahim's right. You see it? <laughs> Ibrahim was right. They for us a deity, just as they had deities. That's scary. <laughs> That was the deed. That was the deed. Exactly. Exactly. Say Imam Mubarak. Barak. Say Imam Mubarak. Barak alik. Zadak Allah ilman. Mubarak. Nasallah yubarak fi. I make the dua for Baraka. Taib. Does everyone understand? So, how we extract it? Who's your Lord? Who's your prophet? What is your what? What is your religion? From that hadith. So you see the depth, fiqh of the great imam, right everyone? You see it? So he extracted the questions of the grave from that, from that hadith. That's deep, isn't it? So let you know the deep fiqh of how he extracted all those benefits from the hadith, word for word. Is it clear, everyone? So it shows the extract insight, the deep insight of the great imam. So you, all the questions of the grave are contained in that narration. Jayyid. What's the, what's the 21st? Al-Hadi wa-Ishroon. Anna sunnata ahl kitab madhmuma. Ki sunnat al-mushrikeen. Say it again. Here we, here we read it again, inshallah. Anna sunnata ahl kitab madhmuma. Ki sunnat al-mushrikeen. He said that the sunnah of ahl kitab is what? Is dispraise just as the sunnah of what? Of the mushrikeen. Where is that extracted, everyone? Where is that extracted from? You have one part. What's the other one? Yup. Alhamdulillah. It's between both of your answers combined. What Jamal said, which is, which is what? Just as Banu Israel said to Musa, right? That's the Yahud, the people, that's Ahl Kitab, right, everyone? Taib, <clears throat> what about as far as the Mushrikeen, which is in regards to what? <clears throat> to tree. The tree is that to Anwar. Because that was from the ways of, of who, everyone? The mushrikeen. طيب. Last one, so we can end the lesson off. He said, أَنَّ الْمُنْتَقِلِ مِنَ الْبَاطِلِ الَّذِي اَعْتَادَهُ قَلْبُهُ لَا يُمَنُوا أَنْ يَكُنَّ فِي قَلْبِهِ بَقِيَّةٌ مِنْ تِلْكَ الْعَادَةِ لِقَوْهِ وَنَحْنُ حُدَثَاءُ عَهَدٍ بِكُفْرٍ Right, everyone? He says that the person who moves from falsehood in which his heart has been well acclimated upon. He says it's not secure that he might have in his heart some remnants of that particular what? of that particular matter, or that particular type of custom or way that he's been acclimated upon. Due to the fact that it says in the hadith that we were new, we just recently left off, kufr. Right, everyone? Just to leave, leave us off and close out the chapter, it says, And we're just reading it in English. This type of remnants, 
that it might be in one's heart. It would not, it would not be removed except after a period of time. Listen to what he says. He said, due to the statement, you'll find in the narration that the Prophet ﷺ said, that the Sahaba mentioned, that we just left off kufr, we were new. Right, everyone? He says, as if he's saying, فَكَأَنَّهُ يَقُولُ مَا سَأَلْنَاهُ إِلَّا أَن لِأَنَّ عِنْدَنَا بَقِيَةٌ مِنْ بَقَائِ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ Listen to what he says. Shaykh Uthameen. He says, as if he's saying, he says, we did not ask it. We didn't ask for this thing. Except due to the fact there was some remnants of what? Of remnants of what, everyone? Jahiliya. That was the reason for us asking. He said, وَلِهَذَا كَانَ مِنَ الْحِكْمَةِ تَغْرِيبَ الزَّانِي بَعْتِ الْجَلْدَةِ عَنْ مَكَانِ لِلْجَرِيمَةِ لِأَلَّا يَعُودَ إِلَيْهَا فَالْإِنسَانَ يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَبْتَعِدَ عَنْ مَوَاطِنِ الْكُفَرِ وَالشِّرِكُ وَالْفُسُوقِ حَتَّى لَا يَقَعَ فِي قَلْبِهِ شَيْءٌ مِنْهَا Now listen to this part. He said, for that reason, from the wisdom of when a person commits fornication, that we know he's what? He's exiled. That the, the Muslim ruler, if he establishes the penalty upon him, that not only did he receive what? Those lashes, but he'll also be exiled from his homeland. A person would say what? He says he's exiled and he's taken away from the place in which he committed the crime. He says, in order for him not to return back to it. So he won't go back to doing it again. He says, for a person likewise, he, 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 he puts, sets himself remote or far away or distance himself from the places of, of dis- disbelief, polytheism, and disobedience. In order for his heart, of anything of his heart to be what? To be protected and nothing of it will fall into it again. You understand, everyone? So that's what he says in this regards to what? This particular last fa'ida, or this, this benefit that's been mentioned, this last matter in this particular lesson. So we can close out, and inshallah, like we said, we'll discuss it whether or not we'll discuss affairs on Ramadan, or we'll start a class on Ramadan real soon. Because like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, but we'll discuss and let the brothers know soon, inshallah. That we might stop Kitab al or we we'll just make it one, and just do the lessons in Siyam consistently so we can finish before Ramadan start. So before Ramadan start, we'll be ready, and then, like I said, then after that, we may be go back to teaching Kitab al I want everyone to focus. Don't let shaitan, shaitan wants to be, everyone to be sidetracked, wasting their time. Do not focus. Don't want to turn to the right, turn to the left. Anybody act silly, don't pay them no mind. They have been affected by this country that just wants everybody to just dispute and go back and forth and to waste their time on absolute nonsense. This country was built, 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 built upon and based upon disputation, argumentation, controversy. That's what makes money here. And it's sad to say that the Muslims are, are affected with that type of mentality. And we just discussed that here in this chapter. And that's from the ways of the people of the book. They love to argue. They love to what? The people of, they like to want argue with you. They like to go back and forth with you. They like controversy. They like to argue. They like to dispute controversy. That's what makes money here. And it's sad to say that the Muslims have adopted the same mentality. They want to, I want to debate with you, I want to, go, I, want to, I want to dispute you, I want to throw you off your square, I want to go back and forth. I just want to just, just say to you, I don't agree with you. Just to, just to say everybody, so everybody can be looking, ooh. That's absolute nonsense. You understand, everyone? That's the type of land we live in, and it's sad. But alhamdulillah, brother Umar Quinn even said that that was from the ways of the Greeks, that one of the gifts that they left for this country is to teach, to teach how to debate and argue and, and to be controversial because that is from something that will, what, will be lucrative for the country, will make money. So one of the gifts that the Greeks had given this country was to what, teach them the, the art of debating and controversy and to argue. So anything that comes up, don't sidetrack yourself for any of that, that, that nonsense. You understand, everyone? Jayid? Play. Any questions about the lesson? Any questions? Anything? How, how many uh, time is left for the call? About five more minutes? I think it's... Uh, uh, no, I know it came in, but how much minutes is left for the call? Yeah, but usually it usually takes like 10 or 15 minutes after. What time did it come in? 9 or 2. 
Oh, we have maybe too much time. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه سبحانك اللهم بحمدك شنو لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وتوب إليك.